fiber or graphite. Graphite, basically anything that is not metal. Mm -hmm. There's only like three types of fiber and graphite. Are if I want to use little pipe cutters, you can get to that armor frame for four bucks. Cut the head off. Cut the head off. I have a little, uh... Yeah. Now, you're going to want to make measure out whatever we, weapon you try to make. Did you, did you bring your heat gun, my friend? I did not. Uh, there is power out. There are plugins. So, all you do is cut off the head at whatever length that you want to go. Remember that you're going to be putting at least a couple, about an inch or two of foam on top of it. So whatever weapon size weapon you're trying to make, you have to cut it a couple of inches shorter than that, okay? So, I'm going to cut that off. Okay. And then you have Blake the multiple head because he's going to clip them for some reason. You could always yep. melt it down. Well, now, you know, now, if you see it on the top here, sometimes you'll have like a little bit of roughness over here. I'll find it near some floor. Move it out, you need to grow what you want, it'll take more time. For a while. No problem. Yeah, pick anything that works. Just anything that grinds. Alright, so. Now that you got this all, got your nice, happy core set up all here, you're gonna need to do a couple of things, different ways you want to start off with. But I always like to start off by measuring the uh, blade that you want to have. So. Today's president sticker. I'm a price tag. So what, you, what you want to do is you want to try and measure out about how long you want your sword to be, or to a little. Okay. space above it. And the reason why you want to do that is that whenever it all compresses down, it's covering the tip of your of your core. That way, should something happen where the other tips that we have fail, you still got a little bit of padding to keep keep someone from getting hurt. Very important on that. Alright? Now obviously with just one layer of that, that's not going to be quite thick enough to actually keep it from lasting. You want to do about two layers of each. You need to make it slightly thick. So once you cut yourself off, I have a question, bro. One second. Once you cut off two, start where you left off. Go back around it again. Two layers like that, or two pieces like that, will make it one that's going to be slightly larger than the pool loop, which means it'll stay in whenever you push it in. Alright? Any other question? Uh, yeah. So, I know this is really far ahead, but for stuff like pommel... Yeah, we'll get to the pommel. Oh. Uh, yeah, just wait till we get there. Now, the important thing to remember is, depending on the type of weapon you're making, whether or not you're making an ultralight or a more a regular practice heavy sword, you're going to determine how many of these you put on there. Usually, you're going to need at least three, and four if you know you're going to use this for a long time. 
Or if you know you want to make this a practice sword, go all the way down with the whole thing. Take whole sheets and just wrap the whole thing. Yeah, I don't recommend that. Practice. For practice weapons, not for tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, even so, I mean, it's going to make that sucker heavy. Well, that's the point. That's why it's practice. So, next thing you want to do is you also want to go to the one at the bottom as well. And you want that just right around the handle. Once again, wrap it. Tight. This will take several sheets to do this, so don't feel bad if you have these two or three. Now, I'm going to do this one with a, uh, a four spot. A three is more for a a true ultralight, but I'm doing a four on this one because I want to make sure this will last for a bit. So, on most swords, we all know that the core usually taps out around here, right? This area. So, we want to reinforce that section as much as possible. That's the one because if you know some place is going to core out very regularly, that's where you want to put the most reinforcement. It is going to affect the balance of your sword, so you're going to have to play around until you figure out what works best for you. But for this one, I'm going to kind of estimate right about there. For threes, though, for like uh, three ones for true ultralights, mm -hmm. would you just put one in the middle, like the exact middle? Yes. Well, you could do it like that if you're worried about balance, or if you know you're going to core out very regularly in the same yeah. spot. You, you can just do three, like two at yeah. the top and one at the bottom, yeah. so that way it sits. And it's, it'll last you one or two turns. Yeah. So, but the question like is, where do you want to put it? It's kind of up to you. I personally like to, I like to balance it on the most commonly hit spots. And then have one just in the middle, just kind of as a place to keep it practice, you know, keep it relaxed at. Yeah. You know, because this may not be a common spot, but you know, it's also where a lot of the stuff's going to go through. It's a way it doesn't core out in the middle on accident. For ultralights, do you want them down like this, the weight down at the handle? Is that where you want the You don't want any weight on ultralights. Yeah. No. On ultralights, you want to basically cut everything that is weight on there. Okay. So, now that we've got our core set up, we're going to need to get a couple of discs ready for the actual top of the, the, top of the weapon. This one, this beautiful little thing is going to be perfect for it. Actually, we can grab the uh, one that's going to shine up a bunch. It's right. Oh, the uh, blue ball. Yeah, yeah, that's our scrap piece. That's our scrap piece. So. I can't phones open to everybody. <laughs> Over there and I right here. What we want to do here is we want to actually cut out a couple of circles as close to the edge as possible, obviously. Just to minimize waste. I have a pair of scissors if you if you need if anybody needs them. Can you rip it off? Or is it tape on? It's tape on really tight. I 
We didn't want it to core. <laughs> Well, it lasted a lot longer than I expected it to. What's the, what's the date on the bottom of it? Oh, yeah. oh you taped over it? Yeah, I covered it. Oh. This thing came off. I kind of like it. Okay. He likes the Then we're not, like you, we're not like you, buddy. We, can't, no. we don't just have 15 once rolls you, of tape. So once we get, once we've got the two top parts right here, I'm going to do the full top layer of the blade first. Okay. Slide it on down. You see this one? You just slide the core down. down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that real nice tight fit is what we're looking for. Real tight. There you go. Yep. Now this is a little bit too far down. So the, we put that down. little piece on the end because the PVC we want to get this sharp. about a little less than flush. Yeah. I'm not sure why was there. Mm -hmm. That's to keep it from pouring the tip out. Alright. So when you stab, it's so established. Then you put that right there. Otherwise, the PVC is going to start cutting through the foam. Now, if you have two people working on this part, it will actually make it a little bit easier. But Would you, you like my assistance? To... Uh, if you'd like, yeah. Okay, give me just a second. Mm -hmm. This is this is part of my magic trick. Mm -hmm. so the trick here. Over a good little ways. That's too crazy. Good ways. We're just packing tape because we're trying to cut out weight on these things too. Duct tape is going to make it super heavy. I, I did that because you were trying to sneak. You, you're trying to sneak under the camera. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's all good, buddy. The reason I don't bring that sword to park anymore is because it cored completely ripped in half mm -hmm. yep. when I was practicing with it at home. Now you're going to have a little bit of a... That's going to smooth out once we actually apply the tape. So, let's do the whole tape. That looks very nice. <laughs> so already we've got, enough, we've got a nice basic blade going on here. Hold on, so the camera. <laughs> nice blade we've got going on here. It's taped down. It's got two discs on the top to prevent it from pouring out. Yeah, the disc to be better. I'm just not super great at circles. It's okay. It counts. Mm -hmm. Circles are hard. Yeah. But, now this is the part that's going to be a lot easier with a, someone to give you a hand. But we want to start. It's going to be a hard one because I'm trying to show it off while we're doing it. Yeah. Camera, this yeah. Yeah. Stand next to me, right here. Okay. Yeah, no one asked me to like, you know, start recording, but I just did. Yeah, you want content, right? Yeah. So if you guys want to come in and look at this while we're doing this, guys. Come on close. <laughs> Not like <laughs> enough to make mm -hmm. out the Yeah. So Draven? Draven. No, he's seen it before. Oh yeah, he's seen it. So, Draven's there like we go up near the top and we're trying to get kind of the tip right here. And this is the part that's going to take a little bit of practice with, especially one or two people. Because you're trying to minimize the amount of ridges you have on the inside. And the reason why we want to do that is so it doesn't prevent chances for people to get scratched on it. If it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world, but it at least looks nice. Now you're not now you're not wanting to go all the way down to the end. You just want to go pretty damn close. All right. All right. Now 
what you've got here is the basic outline of the sword right here. So, give it a good couple whacks on yourself on the back. Feels good. I just have a good job. All right. That was pommel time. That was pommel time. Ooh, that, it feels nice too. Pommel time! Nah, Now for pommels we use a thinner noodle that doesn't have quite the uh, same radius on there because okay. it is not a striking surface. So, it means you cannot pommel strike and hit them so the pommel doesn't work. Also illegal, but you know. I mean, you can do swords that if you wanted it to be a dual blade, but mm -hmm. so you would need well, well, for an example, real quick, if you wanted a sword, it would need to actually be, you know, a good distance. It can't yeah. be just like a pommel-sized blade. It has to actually have, like, at least six, seven, eight inches, something like that, yeah. past the, yeah. to, to count as striking, So, if you wanted to do uh, this end. First thing you want to do after you uh, turn your pommel is just go ahead and take the smaller noodle. We want to go ahead and cut ourselves out another piece. Do you only use one for that? Yeah, because it's not a strike thing, it's just to prevent it from The two is only so that you can hit people and stab them, and it's a stab wound to death. Because all we're doing here is just covering the bottom, and you don't need to worry about it. It would be kind of funny if you named that one your sword on the bottom of it, just longer. So, <laughs> after that, we just want to cut ourselves off a chunk of it that's just going to cover. Small amount, maybe like three or four inches. And the process after that is pretty much the same. We take this, we take this right here, and we're just going to tape it down real quick. We're going to use some of this. Uh, in order just to get it taped down, what we're going to do is we're going to tape it down using a little bit of the self adhesive foam. So this one will actually show up on the bottom of your uh, on the bottom of your weapon. So if you want to choose a specific color, this is a good time for that. Cut another inch to half inch piece. And you're going to want a square as well. Remember that? The square so you can write oh, on the bottom. Yeah, for naming and dates. Right now, I'm just showing this part of it. That's, oh, okay. that's more of our flair that we do. Yeah. <laughs> this one's just more of a. And all we're doing here is just taping the, taping this part of it down. Okay. This little set. Now, on this one, we want to also want to do the uh, top part. So if I get another assistant. I can help. Okay. I want you to hold it right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you can, at this point, you can add the bottom to it if you want to put like a color label on it or anything like that or write anything on it. We're just doing this for a basic demonstration. So we're going to go up and over. <clears throat> and the next one, I'm going to go the other way. Probably don't have any trouble like this. <laughs> Only on the video, right? That, especially with the electrical tape, how it just wants to stick to itself. All right, so. Oh, you mean? got this kind of secured on there just so it won't move around when you tape it down just like we did the first part. So, same situation as before. Yeah. Um, 
want to set a tape on that one. And then we've got a basic sword ready to go right here. Yay! So next step, we're going to cover it. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. A nice, lovely sock or any type of covering that's okay if it works. Slide that over the top. Everybody. <laughs> there you go. Sword. Yay! Sword. It's ye oldie esoteric wacky bad. <laughs> yep. And we're done.